Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 36. Then brought, it means work, Bezio, Bezio, like I said, his name, different names that I come across, and the Holy Bible, and every wise hearted man, those to heart, it's not brains. Manly education is brains. Godly wisdom is heart. So when you got a doctor who's going to work on your brain and your thoughts and not your spiritual condition, he's getting nowhere. And every wise hearted in whom the Lord put wisdom, understanding to know. Wisdom, understanding and to know. Now let's look at chapter 31 verse 3. And we're going to recap in this chapter. But chapter 31 verse 3. Here's the places that you find these three things in a passage. And we're going to look at them. 31.3. What we already just read. I have filled him with the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. And wisdom. And in understanding. And in knowledge. And in all manner of workmanship. So, knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is how to apply what you know. Understanding, as far as the Bible, is your application of knowledge and wisdom for God. And this here is by the Holy Spirit. We've seen in the passage that we already read today is the heart. Also, the Holy Spirit works in the heart of man. And as we turn to chapter 35... Verse 31. Again, he's about the same men. 35, 31. And he had filled him with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and all manner of workmanship for what? To do what God needs to have done for the children of Israel. And with the free will that we've already read about these men in giving to the Lord the other night. They have could take in what God has given them. And they could have used it worldly. Now what you're going to find is. And not so much today but you will probably find. You will find if you go back in the history of music on your radio stations. You will find a lot of the women popular singers have come out of a Baptist church and God has given them a wonderful voice to glorify him but they gave it to the world to use the man that got the ten talents the man that got the five talents the man that got one talent the ten men he went and used it and he got more he got ten more the man that got the five he went and got five more for his master and he well please thou shalt rule over cities the man that got that one talent, he went and buried it in the earth, the dirt, and got no reward. And there are plenty of people today who have talents that are saved and in church and they will not use it. And every person in the world has a talent by God. And he's not using it for God. And he will be found accountable to that talent, that Wisdom, that understanding, that knowledge that has been given to him. 
whether he's saved or not. And Proverbs 2 6. Proverbs 2 6. We find this again, this formula. And it's lacking in men, all three, as far as God. You got to study. And one that studies and is approved of God, to him be wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. In Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6, the Bible says, For the Lord giveth wisdom. You want the right wisdom? It comes from Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, from Solomon, chapter 1, verse 1, who got complete wisdom from God. And Solomon is acknowledging it comes from God. Out of his mouth, God's mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. You want to know wisdom? You better study from Genesis to Revelation, the mouth of God. You know, Israel really did not know what to do with Jesus. They had knowledge of Jesus. They didn't have the understanding of his relationship to God. Why? Because they didn't study the knowledge and understanding of them Old, Tem Old Testament scriptures to know the sufferings and the prophecies of Jesus Christ. By the time they got to Jesus Christ coming out of that grave, they should have went back in the Old Testament and said, wait a minute, 30 pieces of silver, uh, not a bone of him. Uh, his back was described as a furrow. Uh, but they didn't. And it did to their destruction. Now Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. Proverbs 9 10. We'll see this again. From the wisest ever man that got from God and not man. This is a man that, you know, two harlots, you know, we, we had this baby, blah, 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 blah. What we're going to do is my baby's for her baby, my baby, my baby, my baby. He said, give me a sword. And the mother's love, the wisdom of God, give her the baby. So Proverbs 9, 10. Now watch this one. Now put yourself to an educated person that has diplomas on his wall. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now just because he's got diplomas, just because he's got a PhD, just because he's got a doctor in front of his name, just because he maybe built launch uh, muscles and, and rockets in outer space, maybe he may know how the nuclear functions of chemicals and all kinds of things. If he doesn't know God, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, I fear God. I love God. And I've got more wisdom by my fear of God than any scientist who, with their great, great knowledge of we came from nothing of evolution, where I say, hey, we came from God. And there's more proof of God creating than there is of nothing. But we're not finished. We just did wisdom. And the knowledge, what you need to know of the holy, is understanding. So if they don't fear the Lord, and they have no idea of the holy, there is no knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Now, as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian who studies the Word of God, and, and reads the Word of God, and, and gets into the Word of God, I know what is holy and what is not holy. And though I may be a sinner and I still sin, I still know what is holy with God. I fear God. So I have understanding. I can go anybody, you, you, know, you can pick whatever you want, any occult, and I know more than they do because of the Word of God. I know Jesus Christ is God. Even some Christians, I know Jesus Christ is not my king. He'll never be my king. He's never the king of the church. Ever read, ever read some of the, 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 uh, the hymnals, the songs that are in the hymnal? Jesus the king. Jesus. No, they don't even know.
people are messed up in religions because they have no knowledge of the, of the holy because they don't fear God. They don't have no wisdom of God. They don't study the words as we saw already in Proverbs 2.6. Why are people involved in religion? Why are women getting into a religion that just sacks them and puts them down and disgraces them? Because they don't fear God, Jehovah. They don't understand what the love of God is. And they have no knowledge of holy, so they're not going to get that understanding, and they're going to fall for that mess. Isaiah 11.2 Isaiah 11 2. Satan is dark in their minds, and not only is Satan dark in their minds, is they're going to shop for whatever God they want. Those women can leave. People can get out of that church. They can get out of that, that denomination. They, they, but that's what they want. It's what they've been guided to. That's what they've been putting their trust in. Man. But not the man Christ Jesus. Isaiah 11.2 says. And the spirit of the Lord. Well, let's go back now. Verse 1. And there shall come forth. A rod out of the stem of Jesus. Uh, Jesse. Talking about Jesus. A branch shall grow out from its roots. Jesus. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Jesus. Now watch this. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge. And of the fear of the Lord. So there it is. The fear of the Lord. The Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ. All account about in one verse. Of what we read already. You may be talking to someone you love and say, why can't they get it? Because they don't have the Holy Spirit. They're not fearing God. They're too much into man, the human, not man, the Christ, the Son of Man. So Jesus Christ is all wisdom, all understanding, and all knowledge. That's G Daniel 1 4. Daniel chapter 1, verse 4. In Daniel 1 4, we read, and we're talking about the children, children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning, that means expert, in knowledge, and understanding science, as such as had the ability in them to stand in the king's palace. And whom they might teach the learning of the tongue of the Chaldeans. So here are some children who are brought from Jerusalem. They have the wisdom, the understanding, and the knowledge. And in verse 17, same chapter. And as for these four children, Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo, and Daniel. God gave them knowledge and skill in learning and wisdom. No science. So what separates us from verse 4, all these children, they got the wisdom, knowledge, understanding. But the four that stand out and will stand out in the entire book of Daniel is the ones that got it from God. This one's over here, science. Do you know what the science of that day was? I mean, their, their medical was, I mean, the forms that they would use urine and dung from animals. There were treatments that those people in science, would, they would cause more of an infection on the finger. But as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. Ended there. 
Daniel had understanding and visions and dreams. Not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They didn't have the understanding of the visions. And they will not show forth that in the book of Daniel. Daniel is the only man in the Bible outside of Jesus Christ that's recorded to have these three characteristics. And uh, 221, chapter 2, verse 21. Two twenty one, and he changes the times and the seasons. That's God. He removeth kings and set up kings. Whether it be Obama, whether it be Trump, what he called kings or pro That's God that does that. Daniel said that. He giveth wisdom unto the wise, so wise has wisdom, and knowledge to them that know understanding. No understanding. Now, let's go to Job 28, 28. Keep that, what we just said, in mind. What we just said. And then run over to Job 28, 28. And this is a great verse to know, to memorize. Job 28, 28. And this is why some people will not get saved. Job 28, 28. And unto men he saith, God saith, Behold the fear of the Lord. I think we've seen that before. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So let's say you've got a worldly Christian. He's saved. He has no understanding because he won't depart from his sins. You're dealing with somebody. They won't get saved. Because they have no understanding. Because they will not depart from their sins. And probably don't have no fear to God. Now I'm not going to say. Because some people you will deal with. They've got the fear of the Lord. Then a friend comes along. Or something you know, something topples over. Or they're just not willing to give up their sin. But understanding in the Bible. I, I, I don't want to do that. I hate doing that. Need to put it under the blood. Need to stop it. But with wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, you see the common denominator is to fear God. Now, when you get a guy up there, and if you were to put all the wisdom and knowledge and understanding he has, if you were to put it on badges that he could put it on his coat and de decorate his whole tired chest and stomach, and yet if he does not fear God, God will laugh at him, Proverbs chapter 1. You know nothing. I can break down all the nuclear molecules and build a nuclear power plant. But if I don't fear God, you're nothing. Now, what about the Christian? Colossians 1.9. Colossians 1.9 is an interesting statement for Paul. He's writing to Colossians. He's writing to a church he's never visited. This is one of the epistles that Paul has written to. And he's never been. He's never met these people. And he's writing to Bible-believing Christians. Because in verse 1, chapter 1, verse 2, to the saints and faithful brethren. He's writing to in verse 9. I'm a saint. I try to be faithful. I don't know if God could write me down as faithful or not, but I try to be. And he says, verse 9, For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you. Okay, Paul's always praying for him. Paul is reaching out to him. Paul wants them to do good. Paul wants the best for them. So what is he going to say to them? He's never met them. He's never been there. And desire that you might be filled with the knowledge. Now that. Oh, wait a minute. We're not. We're not. We're not, we're not just knowledge. Let's watch. I did an error. I, I put the. I put a period there. There's no period. The knowledge of His will. Paul says, "I want you to know what the will of God is for you." 
in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. There is the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding that Paul says, I pray that you get that in your Christian walk. So we can get that. And spiritual understanding. What is that spiritual understand, understanding that we've seen? It's what you can do for God. First thing you can do for God, depart from your sins. Know the holy. Know what is right. And here, know what the will of God is and do it. So when we run back to Exodus, those are the places where you find the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. When we run back to Exodus, what do you think about this, this, this Basil and the whole of it? They're just not some fruitcakes out of the middle of the desert somewhere that can work jack of all trades. They know and love and fear the God, fear the God Jehovah, by what we read. So you can't say all Israel is perverted. So again, there were Bazil and Ahoyab and every wise-hearted man or others in whom the Lord put wisdom, understanding, and know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary. According to all that the Lord had commanded, these men had to love the Lord and had to fear the Lord. They're going to build something. That no Israelites ever going to see. They're going to build something that only a high priest is going to see. And I don't know how he saw that unless God shined up that most holy place. God is trusting these men with the knowledge. Now, do you realize? You know, God is strict when it comes to his word. He holds his word above his name. That that thing was to be two cubics, exactly two cubics. If it's supposed to be blue, purple, and all that, don't you get any stain on it. And Moses called Bazil in the Holy of every wise hearted man. And here we go with the heart again. When we looked at the heart before, I think I'm saved. That's not the answer. You know you're saved. In whose heart the Lord had put wisdom. And everyone whose heart stirred him up to come unto the work to do it. And notice that one's just wisdom. Here comes people stepping up. What can I do? I want to serve God. And they receive of Moses all the offering. Which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary. To make with all. And they brought yet unto him free offerings. Every morning. It's a free will offering by men. You, you could do it or you don't have to do it. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. So every man had a duty. Every man had a job. There was wood carving. There was carpentry. There was metalsmith. There was engravers. There was cloth makers. There was all kinds of trades going on. Every man had his job. So how wonderful is the church age? And they spank unto Moses saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work, which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave a commandment that they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp. Say, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing, for the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and it was too much. They were overflowing with the free will offering. You know what's a shame? You've got these mega churches, and they are getting offerings upon offerings upon offerings. They are getting huge amount of offerings, and they're not using it for God. And you got a broken down preacher who loves the Lord, studies the Bible, prays, is a servant of God, known of God, just trying to get his congregation to go through, and they're not giving him enough, and he struggles. I've never heard of any church where the pastor has to 
Hey, everyone. For the next two months, will you just stop giving money in the plate? Because we, we've got too much. I've never heard that, ever. The Israelites love the Lord. Right now. They're going to blow it. They just really blew it with the with the calf. Every wise hearted. Have you really got it now? Have you got hearted? You ought to know by now that God hates idolatry and has to be hard. I mean, man that among them that wrought the work of the tabernacle. Oh boy, here we go again. We're going to go through all these articles again. And yet, I don't know what Jesus did when he was 10, 9, 11, 14, 15, 16. I don't know when he was born. But I sure can study and get down this tabernacle. This has got to be important with God because it keeps showing up. Ten curtains of fine twine linen and blue and purple and scarlet. With cherubims of cunning work made he them. We read this in Exodus 26. We are going back over Exodus 26. The length of one curtain was 28 cubits. And the breadth of one curtain was 4 cubits. And the curtains were all of one size. So they're the same. The 10 curtains. And he cupped the 5 cu curtains one to another. They took 5 curtains, they put them together and made one big curtain. And the other 5 curtains he coupled one to another. He made loops of blue on the edge of one curtain. From the self edge in the coupling, likewise, he made in the up, uttermost side of the, another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops, don't make fifty one, don't be forty nine. Made he in one curtain, and fifty loops he made in the edge of the curtain which was in the coupling of the second. The loops held one curtain to another. And he made fifty taches of gold. And coupled the curtains one unto another with the taxes, so it became one tabernacle. Well, you ever can't accuse me of not reading the Bible word by word. And he made curtains of goat's hair. Now this ain't going to be like, you look at these badgers, kid. What is badger? I've never even seen a badger. For the tent. That big thing is a tent. Over the tabernacle. Where do you worship your God? Plain and simple? Yeah. A tent. That's it? That's what your God deserves? A tent? What's that, what's that I see on that tent? Badger skin. Really? Oh, but you haven't seen inside, though. You know? The length of one curtain was 30 cubits, and four cubits was the breadth of one curtain. And the 11 curtains were on one side, were one side. We don't even know what the size of Jesus was. But you know what the size of the curtains are in the tabernacle, and the tent, and the boards, and the altar, the altars. But we sure don't know what this size, we don't know what the height of that candlestick, do we? And Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? And the length of one curtain was 30 cubits, and four cubits was the breadth of one curtain. The 11 curtains were of one size, and he coupled five curtains by themselves, and six curtains by themselves. He made 50 loops upon the utmost edge of the curtain, and the coupling, and 50 loops made he upon the edge of the curtain, which coupled the second. He made 50 touches of brass. Judgment. To couple the tent together that it might be one. And he made a covering for the tent ram skin dyed red. Well, why dye it red? And to cover the badger skin above it. You're not going to see it dye red. What's going on there? I'll tell you what's going on. You know what that badger skin is? That picture's of human beings. Ew, filthy kind of. What is a badger? Well, what's that red skin's dyed red? Red. What's inside of our skin? Blood, isn't it? What was the animal that replaced Isaac on the mountain? I think it was a ram, wasn't it? Don't they say ram tough? Pick up? 
that they say don't. And then under that, goat's hair. What's that? Yeah, but what's all under that? God the Father, God the holy place, God the most holy place. The, the prayer, the bread, the, the lights, the, the incense altar, the mercy seat. What, what is that? That's what's in my heart right now, the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, I am seated in those heavenly places. See, you may look at this flesh and say, well, what is that? I may be witnessing to a lost man. Now, yeah, look at you. Uh, you're just a human. What can you do? You have no superpower. Uh, you're, you know, you're too loud and stuff like that. But what's it all about? If you can only see my heart and get what's in your heart that's in my heart. Stop looking on that. You know, what, 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 what did uh, Samuel say to Saul? I mean, David? David's father, man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Heart! There it is again. And he made boards for the tabernacle of shittim wood, standing up. The length of, length of a board was ten cubits, and the breadth of a board was cubic and a half. One board and two tendons. That's a mortis. Mortis. I forgot what they say. Equal distance one from another. Thus did he make for all the boards of the tabernacle. He made boards for the tabernacle, 20 boards for the south side southward. And 40 sockets of silver he made under the 20 boards. Two sockets under one board for his two tendons. Two sockets under another board for his two tendons. And for the other side of the tabernacle, which is toward the north corner, he made 20 boards and 40 sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. And for the side of the tabernacle westward, he made six boards. Two boards were made he for the corners. On each corner, there was a double boards of the tabernacle in the two sides. And they were cut beneath. And coupled together at the head thereof to one ring. Thus he did to both of them in both the corners. And there were eight boards, and their sockets were sixteen sockets of silver, every under every board two sockets. And to hold it all together, he made bars of shittim wood, five for the boards on the one side of the tabernacle, five boards for the other side of the tabernacle and five boards for the tabernacle on the side westward where's the east that's the that's where the veil is man goes east to west by god's way he made the middle bar to shoot through the boards from the one end to the other so there's three sets of, of, of bars going through this wood one on top one on the bottom and one in the middle he overlaid the boards with gold Wait a minute, it's covered by, wait a minute, let's get this right. It's covered by goats. It's covered by rams. And it's covered by badge, and yet those boards are gold. You look at me. I'm sinner, I'm flesh, I'm man. Even saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm still flesh. Okay, I'm still a sinner. You know, I have the opportunity to get gold, silver, fresh stones. Where's that gold come from? Come from God. The Bible says that Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, has a street of gold that is white and clear. That's gold in its purest form. He overlaid the boards with gold and made their rings of gold to be places for the bars. So there's there are rings in that wood, and you put the bars between them, and overlaid the bars with gold. And this would be the best gold. And he made a veil, okay, this would be the veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen. With cherubims he, with cherubims made he it of cunning work. That sounds good, doesn't it? That's the one that Jesus ripped when he died. I don't know if it would have made a sound. Again, this is all Exodus 26. I'm just looking here real quick. Let's see. Hebrews 10.20. I don't know what this is, but let's, let's go to Hebrews 10.20. It looks good. Hebrews is a good book to back us up here. Hebrews 10.20. Hebrews 10 is a great book. It's written to Hebrews. 
by the name Hebrews. Hebrews 10 20, I think I said. Yep, Hebrews 10 20. Okay, so as you turn, it says, and he made a veil of blue, heavenly, and purple, royalty, and scarlet, the blood, fine twine linen, which is the righteousness of the saints, with cherubims that surround the throne of God, made he it for cunning work. And we look here, it says, by a new, New Testament, and living way, which he, Jesus, has consecrated us through the veil. That is to say, his flesh. That veil is rent. All right. Re Revelations 1 says, We are king and priest. I'm going to consecrate you, priest. Come on in. No priest was allowed beyond this veil but the high priest once a year, but twice for his sins and sins of the people. And Jesus, listen, you're consecrated by my bloodshed, by my gospel. Come on in, where no priest could ever go. You know why Zacharias was afraid when, when Gabriel met him in the holy place? And he said, there would be no one in this place but me. And that's the holy place. And he made thereon four pillars of shittim wood. And overlaid them with gold. And their hooks were of gold. And he cast for them four sockets of silver. Gold, royalty, silver, redemption. That in uh, Exodus 26, 31, that is the veil that is rent in two. And he made it hanging for the tabernacle door. Now, this is the one that would be between the table and the outside uh, uh, labor. Hanging to the tabernacle door, blue and purple and scarlet. Fine twine linen and of needlework. That's handmade. Even they use a, a, a loom or something like that. That's still by hand. That's hard work. And five pillars. The one inside had four pillars. And you add five and four together, what do you get? Fruits of the Spirit. The doorways of that tabernacle hangs upon the pillars of the fruit of the Spirit. Nine. With their hooks. And he overlaid their chapters at the top, and their fillets with gold, but their five sockets were of brass outside judgment. You don't go through that door unless you've been judged. And when you've been judged, you judge your sins, and you put them upon Jesus Christ to enter through that veil. Not, you just... So you see where God's importance is. It's not in the man's importance. Man would want, oh, I want to know everything about Jesus. You do, by the tabernacle. That's the greatest study of Jesus. You dare th listen. The day that the rapture happens, and we're judged at the judgment seat of Christ, and that's finished. And when we get to Revelation 20, and the great white throne judgment is done, Je Revelation 21, do you realize we can't even fathom What's going to happen to us in eternity? But we can already go to heaven and realize that down below this earth there's a hell, the brazen altar. And you got to come to Jesus for the washing. And I didn't say baptism, I said for the washing. And there was a place where the priests washed themselves. I said the priest. Revelation 1. Jesus said, I wash your feet. Peter says, oh, no, 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 don't you wash my feet. He says, listen, i got to wash your feet because you get filthy. And Peter's like, no, no, wash my whole body. The priest didn't take a bath there. <laughs> they washed their hands and their feet. And then you go through that veil, and you step in, and you are in the most holy place of ever. And the first thing you're going to see is the word Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass. There it is. And you say, well, how can I see that? You look over to the left, and here's this beautiful, brilliant gold, gold candlestick that's going to be lit and up, and it's going to be given more light off, light off just by the gold and the gold of the table. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. 
There's no world allowed in that room. And that other veil, it's ripped. I don't care if the priests sold it up, whatever they do. It's ripped. And you step in there and you see the incense altar there. And you say, that's the prayers. That's all the times I ever pray. Whether I pray for myself or I pray for anybody else. There's the prayer. And the Bible says that's a sweet savior. That's a good smell in the, in the nose of God. Revelation. And I look at that mercy seat and I get down on my knees because I know God's on that seat. There he is. That's where my blood, that's where the blood of Jesus Christ has been put on that altar for my sins. And I see the cherubims. There they are. There's only two in that room. But John says there's four of them. I get them all. And I get to hear them say, holy, holy, holy. I want to hear that that day. I am in the most holy place where no one can ever go but those that are a child of God. And what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to go to heaven. And Jesus is going to call his bride and say, All right, everyone, wrap, mount up. Let's go. We're going to get on our horses. We're going to come back. We're going to pick up the, his, uh, God's bride to Israel. We're going to wipe out the enemy of Jesus Christ. And we're going to come to some... Oh, mate, wait a minute. We're going to come back to the Millennial Kingdom. And how many Christians be like, What is that? Haven't you studied your Bible? There it is. We're going to read about this again in Ezekiel. Why? Because there's a millennial kingdom. It's coming back. There's a king. There's a there's a temple coming back in the tribulation period, and there's a temple coming back in Ezekiel. Ezekiel tells us in the millennium. We're going to see this again. It would be great to know what we're looking at. Can you imagine a Christian who's rolling? Well, man, that thing is ugly. That thing is. What is that? And you know it's gonna be Christian. What is that? Uh, Moses, <laughs> you want to come up here and explain this to, to this guy here? Uh, Zeke, you want to come up? Some people don't read the Old Testament. I, I've I've had Christians. Oh, I don't read the Old Testament. It's boring. Really? I find it fun. I find it interesting. Except for number seven. That's the only problem I have in the whole time. Number seven. It's all good. It's all about Jesus. Every single chapter is about Jesus Christ. 